Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials. And you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam as you're working through and preparing to take it. And then it's also got tips on how to best make use of the time once you're actually in the exam room on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, it's all there for you. If you can give me a like, that'd be fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. And so let's press on. We're towards the back of the book. We're on page 46 for the second of the general exercises. And if you can turn with me to that page, we're ready to get going. Remember, this is referring to information from all of grade one, all of grade two, all of grade three and also the new information included in this grade four book. So there's a lot to be bearing in mind here. And so I'm going to give you some reference points where to look back for the information that the questions are referring to. I suggest you have your eraser and ruler to hand. Always work in pencil and then you're able to rub out any mistakes. It's best to have a go. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. It's better to learn by your mistakes. And so I'm going to just help you to know where to refer back to. And then I suggest that you just press pause or stop and come back to the video later once you've had a go yourself and we'll check through these answers together. So we're referring to this section of music. It's a Chopin waltz. Very nice. And then we're going to answer these questions. So this first question is the music printed faster or slower? The clue that you're after is the tempo direction here. And you can find the answer to that. It refers to some of the um, performance directions found in grade two, section I. And also um, right the way back to grade one, section Q. Let's move on. So the time signature now. So we first find out about time signatures in grade one, section B. What is the key? So really the key signature and so on that we're looking at, we first discuss in grade four, section E. Give the full name of the last note in bar 14. And so that refers to a topic that we've covered in this grade. Uh, so that's grade four, section C. So moving on. So give the full name of a note that is the enharmonic equivalent of the last note in bar 15. So we're looking at an enharmonic equivalent to this note. So really it's just making sure that you um, know your clefs. And so we first deal with those clefs in grade one, section D. But I think really it's just a matter of looking carefully and figuring that one out. What is the interval between the two notes in bar six? Just so I can move my book up. There we go. Uh, so we first look at those sorts of intervals in grade four, section H. What's similar about the three passages marked with these brackets here? So we're just doing a bit of comparison to these bracketed areas here. So really it's just... Um, general observation. Don't get too bogged down in the detail. It's just a general observation there. What's the name of the ornament in bar 16? So we, we deal with ornaments in this grade. So that's grade 4, section K. And if you find that you've got a bit rusty on any of these topics, you can always just pop back to the video and refresh your memory on the related tutorials there. 
Here we go, the next one. The music includes part of a chromatic scale. Show where this begins and ends by writing an X above the first and the last notes. So it's just a bit of observation, really. But we refer to the chromatic scale in grade four, section J. Name a standard orchestral woodwind instrument that could play this melody. So you need to be careful that you're in the right uh, pitch range for this clef. And uh, we look at that in grade four, section L. And then the last question, using the alto clef, write the key signature in the first note of the melody. And we deal with alto clef in this grade, so that's grade four, section B. So now you know where to go and find the answers. Have a go at that and then come back to me and we'll work through this together. So I'm hoping that you've had a go of this yourself now. And so let's work through this section by section. So is the music printed uh, above, is it faster or slower than the music that came before it or is it the same? Well, I would suggest that it was slower And the reason for that is uh, this direction here, più lento. So più actually means more, and lento means slowly. So it's more slowly because that suggests a comparison uh, to previously faster tempo. So that would be my explanation. To previously faster tempo. Something obviously preceded this that was faster and now the composer is to tell, asking us to go more slowly. So a bit of detective work is needed there. Add a time signature in the correct place in the music. So of course the time signature goes here at the beginning of the music. And we've got an anacrusis here, so this first section won't help us, but if we look in the later bars, it's pretty obvious that that's a nice, easy three, four, three quarter notes, three crotchet beats per bar. Four E would give us the answer to this question. What is the key of bars one to 12? So we've got this key signature here and all the way up to bar 12, there are no more accidentals to sort of change that. It gets a little bit more interesting here, but we're not asked to take notice of that. So we need to know a key signature with five flats and that would be D flat major. There we go. Give the full name of the last note in bar 14. So let's look at bar 14. So we're looking at this one here. So the note head is note B. If you're not sure of that higher register, if you think you know it goes every good boy deserves football, F is the top line, G, A, B, but it's B double flat. So that's just what we need to write there. B double flat. There we go. You need to write that out in words as well to show that you understand it's double flat. Don't just copy the symbol. So the next question, give the full name of a note that is an enharmonic equivalent of the last note in bar 15. So we're referring to this note here. So we need it to sound the same, but give it a different name. It's written differently. So here it's written as a G flat. And so you might find it's helpful to just have your piano keyboard to help. So just sketch it out on the page if you want to. In an exam, you'd always have a piece of scrap paper. So G flat could also be referred to as F sharp. So that's our N harmonic equivalent. I suppose you could get really uh, complex and call it an E double sharp. That would be another alternative, but F sharp's easy enough to get to. 
next one so we're cracking on through what's the interval between the two notes in bar six so here we are we're looking at these notes here so we're looking from an F to a G but don't forget it's a G flat because of your key signature so F to G natural would be a major second but F to G flat with the key signature being active makes it a minor second it's a smaller interval so it's a minor second okay so a little bit of observation now is required what's similar about the three passages marked x y and z that are bracketed so let's just have a little look so we've got a tie over the bar everything's going down in step tie over the bar everything's going down in step but the timing changes a little bit at the end here it's tied over the bar again everything goes down in step the phrasing is different but the one common denominator really is that everything descends stepwise so we just need to say notes descend stepwise just a general observation no need to get too bogged down in minute detail there here we go then what's the name of the ornament in bar 16 so here we go this one here it's a mordant but we need to be a bit more specific than that we need to say if it's upper or lower the lower mordant has a line through it this is the upper mordant where we just play that note up a note back again quickly it's the upper mordant there we go next one we're getting there now the music includes part of the chromatic scale show where this begins and ends by writing an x above the first and the last notes of the sequence here so my guess would be once we get past bar 12 when it moves out of the playing key signature and we start getting some accidentals it, you can see it's all going to start going on here We've got some accidental showing us that it's changing. It's just a matter of figuring out where that starts. So D flat to C would be, uh, let's see so we can see that. There we go, so it's all on screen. So D flat to C is chromatic, but C to B flat because your key signature is not. So it hasn't started yet. C to B flat again is not, so it's not started here, but here we've got B flat, B double flat, this is looking promising, A flat, G, G flat, F. So we know it definitely starts here. So we've got to the F. And then there's a big jump, so obviously that's no longer chromatic. So we know it starts here on the second beat of bar 14, and it ends on the first note of bar 16. So you can find the general area quite quickly just by looking for some accidentals, and then you've just got to look a little bit more closely in detail. There's no need to scour through every note. You can tell straight away at a glance that that's not... Um, going to be chromatic but here you can tell it's going to get a bit more um, promising for the answer so then we've completed that question name a standard orchestral woodwind instrument that could play this melody so you need to make sure that you're choosing a, a woodwind instrument that would play in the treble clef and so you could suggest either flute that's the highest or clarinet that would also be acceptable so would oboe bassoon is not because that would be bass clef righty ho last one so using the alto clef write the key signature and the first note of the melody so let's deal with this a step at a time so alto clef we need sort of a double bar line to start things off 
that's where the clef is positioned and then we just need those little backward C hook sort of symbols that will do no need to be too artistic about it now we need the key signature so we need a key signature in five flats but now repositioned so we need a B flat below the middle line E flat second line up a flat, so that's sorry, that's second line from the top. A flat is second line from the bottom. Just trying to describe that. B E A D flat, so that's one above the middle line, that's the space there. And then G flat, uh, C B A G flat, C B A G flat is the bottom space. There we go. And then we need to find which note we're writing. So here we've got the F above middle C. And so to write that in the alto clef without getting the wrong octave, there's middle C, D, E, F. So we're in the top space. There we go. And that's that lot done. I hope this is helping to bring into um, memory all the information that we've covered in grades 1, 2, 3 three and four. If you find that you're a bit rusty on any of those topics, just go back and re-watch the video and read through your notes in your exercise book and you'll soon sort of bring it back into remembrance and get a little bit more conversant with the knowledge. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you can give me a subscribe, that'd be great and like, that'd be really encouraging to me. Stay updated and please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all the information there to help you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.